moved to work in the next year. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to take it. Amen. For violence and suffering. Amen. But we take it by force. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. What an honor it is to be in the presence of the Lord tonight. Amen. Amen. It's so good to see everyone in the house of the Lord tonight. So good to feel the presence of the Lord. Aren't you glad that we're in his house tonight? Amen. I'm glad that it's still a miracle work in God. Amen. We've been, we've been praying for you. We've been calling his name out. And he's here at church tonight. Amen. Praise the Lord. When man has given up all hope, God stepped in. When man said it couldn't be done, God said let him do it. Amen. We're just praising God for His miracle tonight. Amen. Praise the Lord. And it's good to have you here. But most of all, it's good to be in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. So let's just ask the Lord to have His way in this house tonight. Father, we thank You. We praise You. We glorify You. And we honor You for who You are. I thank You that You are a God that still answers prayer. That You are a God that still is able to do the impossible. And Lord, I pray tonight that You would just meet us in this house. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done in this place as heaven has already ordained it. Let us leave this house knowing that we may encounter the glory of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
So let's remember them in prayer as well. Sister Karen. Um, Derek's mom had her long box today, and the doctor said it does look malignant, but we won't know for sure until the results come in Wednesday. Uh, but just be in prayer. Like I said, she, you know, accepted whatever. She's safe. Mm -hmm. She's ready to go. But, of course, you never want to see him suffer, be in pain or anything. Right. So, and I know God can work all that. So she's got some multiple spots everywhere on her spine. They found We found that out this week on her spine and just, you know, both hips and everything. And she has an awful lot of pain in her right hip. Mm -hmm. But, like I said, I know God's able to reverse all that. So Amen. just pray that his will be done, of course, as always. And, uh, like I said, we should have those results by Wednesday. But just remember her mentally, you know, yeah. uh, cause she gets overwhelmed easy with stuff. And so just really remember her when you pray Hallelujah. and yeah. of course pray for all of us that Hallelujah. we can just be there and give her the care that she needs and everything. So Amen. Yeah, just remember all that in prayer. Let's remember them. Also the Robinson family, those that have been following, uh, sister Chris Harrison's post, yeah. her niece Sarah went home to be with the Lord this week as well. And they're doing her services on Saturday morning. So let's just pray for that family, that God would comfort them as well. Amen. How many knows that the Lord is still on the throne? Amen. 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 I don't know how in the world we can face tragedy without Him, sure. without His presence. Amen. So let's remember all of these requests. And we're going to ask you to stand tonight. Amen. Did you have a prayer request, my dear sister? Yes. Can you keep your hand? family. We just lost such a turmoil this week, too. Oh, goodness. Yes, let's remember that for sure. Amen. Let's remember that God would just comfort these families that are dealing with loss. Let's say the offering declaration together. Let's declare it. How many knows that he's the God of more than enough? Amen. Amen. We're believing. We're standing on his word. We declare it. And he's going to prepare it. Amen. Amen. We faithfully bring our tithes, offerings, and gifts today. We understand it is a seed in our hands being sown in God's kingdom. We recognize the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob as the source and provider of our seed. Today, we declare a supernatural release of God's favor in every area of our lives, jobs and job promotions, original ideas, unexpected financial gain, the wealth of the wicked into the hands of the righteous, debt cancellation, as well as healing and deliverance to the mind, body, and spirit. We declare this offering to be light to the darkness of this world, a harvest of souls and finances in this ministry. We proclaim the floodgates of heaven are open over Judah Tabernacle in this last day revival. God has blessed us for the sole purpose of blessing others. Amen. Can you lift your hands tonight and ask the Lord to bless the offering? I'm going to ask Aaron to pray for the offering tonight. Father God, we thank you today, God. We thank you, God, for your presence that we feel in your house, God, this evening, God. And Lord, I ask, God, that you touch this offering, Lord, Father God, multiply it for your kingdom, God. Lord, we thank you and we praise you, God, Lord, for blessings, God, upon families, God. Lord, Father God, that you, we've already heard, Lord, and we thank you, God, for our new worship center, God, that's going to be built, God. And we thank you, God, that the funds are already on its way, God. And we thank you and we praise you, God. In Jesus' name we pray.
for prayer calls, so we're going to go ahead and amen. Sister Gavin, we need some, and Brother Mark, we need some tonight, so we're going to go ahead and do that. The little guys can be dismissed, they want to go downstairs, so we're going to pray for these prayer calls, amen, and for them, how do we believe that the Lord's able to do it tonight?
Let's go to the book of 1 Kings tonight. 1 Kings chapter 15. Amen. And again, remember Pastor as he is preaching revival. We're believing for the Lord to give him souls. For his labor. Amen. 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 I think I'm kind of biased, but I think we've got one of the best preachers in the world. Amen. When it comes to Pastor Jeff. How about you? Amen. So West Virginia is blessed tonight to have him there. Amen. Praise the Lord. First Kings chapter 19, verse, amen, verse 15. If you found it, please stand for the reading of God's word. We're thankful for that tonight. Amen, amen, amen. Lord, I feel the Holy Ghost. Amen. I feel the Holy Ghost tonight. I, I feel dangerous. I don't know. Amen. Praise the Lord. First Kings chapter 19, verse 15. If you found it, shout amen. Amen. And the Lord said unto him, Go return unto the way to the wilderness of Damascus, and when thou hast come up, anoint Haziel to be king over Syria. And Jehu, the son of Nimshi, shalt thou anoint to be king over Israel. And Elisha, the son of Saphat, shalt thou anoint to be the prophet in thy room. And it came to pass that him that escapes the sword of Haziel shall Jehu slay. And him that escapes the sword of Jehu shall Elisha slay. Yet I have left me seven thousand in Israel, all the knees which have not bowed unto Baal, and every mouth which has not kissed him. Well, praise God for it. So he departed thence and found Elisha the son of Saphat, who was plowing twelve yoke of oxen before him, and be and he with the twelve, and Elijah passed by him, and casted his mantle upon him. And he left the oxen, and ran after Elijah, and said, Let me, I pray thee, kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow thee. And he said unto him, Go back again, for what have I done to thee? And he returned back, and he took a yoke of oxen, and slew them, and boiled their flesh, with the instruments of the oxen, and gave unto the people, and they did eat. Then he arose and went unto Elijah, and he ministered unto him. Praise the Lord. I'm going to ask the brother to blast the shofar. I want you to give God praise tonight yes. in this tabernacle. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. tonight on the topic, the point of no return. When we begin to look in scripture, we understand that it is a time when King Ahab and Queen Jezebel ruled over Israel. We understand that Ahab was a wicked king, that he did not do what the Lord had commanded him to do, nor did he live the statutes that God wanted him to live. The Bible tells us that Elijah, amen, that Elijah was the prophet at this time during the reign of King Ahab and Queen Jezebel. Now you understand that Ahab did wicked in the eyes of the Lord, but scripture tells us that he did more wicked in the eyes of the Lord than his father and even his grandfather. And one of the things that he did that was wicked is he married a priestess in the house of Baal by the name of Jezebel. 
Amen. She did not honor God. She did not love God. She did not want anything to do with the God of Israel. She was, amen, a priestess, amen, and a princess. And she wanted to serve Baal and Ashtaroth. But the Bible tells us that one of the things that she did was she put an assault against the prophets of God. She tore down the altars of God and she raised up the poles and the altars of Baal and she took care of the prophets of Baal in her own house. But how many knows that it doesn't matter how many the enemy has, God always just needs one. Amen. Because in the midst of all of this, God had a man by the name of Elijah. His name in Hebrew meant strength or almighty. In his name it meant Jehovah is God. He came, amen, as a Tishbite. The word Tishbite means a recourse. A recourse is a source in a difficult situation. So they were in this difficult situation and God raised up the prophet Elijah at this time. And before you get to the scriptures that I read to you, you understand, amen, that the prophet Elijah was fed by ravens by the water brook. And when the water brook broke dry, up, he was taken care of by a widow. And when the widow sustained him for a while, the Bible said he was told to meet Ahab and to declare that it wasn't going to rain until he said so. And according to scripture, there was no rain until the prophet declared it. We find that he had a showdown on Mount Carmel. The Bible said him and 450 prophets of Baal. And he said, if God be God, let him answer by fire. But if Baal be God, let him answer by fire. Well, let me just give you the end of the story. Paul Harvey says this is the rest of the story. One man stood and 450 men were defeated. Elijah stood on the top of Mount Carmel and ruled over the prophets of Baal. When Jezebel heard what he had done, the Bible said that she sent an assault against him. And the Bible said when he heard it, that he ran and was yoked of under a juniper tree, a broom tree. And the Bible said that God began to speak to him in that juniper tree. And then he went into a cave. And God said, what doest thou here, Elijah? Get up, get yourself ready. Because I'm getting ready to do something for you. The Bible says that the wind came, the fire came, and the earthquake. But God was not in the wind. He was not in the fire. And he was not in the earthquake. But according to Scripture, the Bible said that Elijah took his mantle. The word mantle in Hebrew means the covering or an outward garment. He took his mantle and he wrapped it around his face. And a still small voice spoke to him and gave him the plan to defeat Ahab and Jezebel. The Bible said that he was to anoint a young man by the name of Elisha, the son of Saphat, to be the prophet in his room. Can somebody shout Hallelujah. The Lord gave him the instruction there in 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 15 and 16. And the Bible said that in verse number 19, that Elisha, a man, the son of Saphat, was plowing the field with the twelve yoke of oxen. Now, I want to give you some history here. The word Elisha in Hebrew means God of supplication. He was the son of Saphat. The word Saphat means judge. It is a root word that means to govern, to litigate, or to punish. It is safe to say that Elisha came from a well-off family. When you look at his son's name, or when you look at his father's name, you understand that he came from a father who was a judge, a litigator, who had the ability to punish. Amen. Because of his name. And we also understand that his dad was a businessman because Elisha worked for him. And the Bible said that Elisha 12, this is where you're coming in. The Bible said that Elisha plowed a man with the 12 oxen or the 12 yoke of oxen that was his father. Now, could you imagine that job? Amen. Eli this is not Leslie's commentary. Elisha got up that morning. His mom Mama probably said, what are you going to do today? Well, I'm going to work for dad. I'm getting those oxen 
Amen. Together. It wasn't a glorious job because you had to plow with oxen. I don't know about you, but if you study anything about oxen, they're not the smartest of animals. Amen. There's a reason why you had to put a yoke on their neck. You had to direct them where they needed to go. Not only were they not the smartest of animals, they weren't the best smelling animals around. And he had to stare at the backside of an oxen. Let me pause for just a moment and let you understand what kind of job he had. He stared on the backside of an oxen all day, plowing the field for his father. But one day, God was going to change his outcome. God was going to change his life. And the Bible said that he, as he was plowing, just go ahead and plow, brother. I'm not going to keep you very long. But as he was plowing, the Bible said that the prophet Elijah passed by his way. Now, he did not pass by and say, excuse me, my name is Elijah. I hope you heard about me. I'm the prophet of Israel. He, the Bible doesn't tell us that he laid his hands on him and gave him a word. The Bible doesn't even tell us, Brother Markham, that he said anything to him. But the Bible said as he passed his way. He took his mantle and he casted it upon him. Uh -huh. He took his mantle and he casted it upon him. The word cast means to throw down or away. The word pass by in Hebrew may means a transitioning. What took we preached about the transitioning or Jordan the last Thursday that we preached. But as he passed by, it was almost, Sister Karen, like a transaction. Elijah didn't say anything, but he just casted his outer garment on him. I've come to tell somebody that the Lord has placed his garment upon you tonight. I've come to tell you that you just need to be, listen, Elisha was just faithful in what he knew. He was faithful in plowing. And I'm here to tell you that right now it may not seem glorious. It may not seem like it's getting you anywhere. Right now you may feel a little bit discouraged because you don't see a whole lot happening when it comes to what you feel like God's called you to do. But can I tell you, if you're faithful over a few things, God will make you ruler over many. And I'm here to tell somebody who thought you were going to come in tonight on an ordinary Thursday night. Amen. I've come to tell you that God is about ready to flip your world. I've come to tell you that God is about ready to turn it over. I've come to tell you that God is getting ready to cause the transitioning to take place. And you thought it was going to be the same thing over and over and over again. But I've come to tell you that God is the God of the turnaround. And he's getting ready to turn it around on your behalf. Somebody giving praise in this house tonight. Because, amen, the Spirit of the Lord, the Holy Ghost, is passing by our way. And he's got a mantle in his hand. And he's getting ready to put it on us. Hallelujah. Hang with me. I'm going somewhere. Hang with me. Whew, thank you, brother. You gonna help me. So the Bible said he casted his man upon. Listen, you gotta look at what happened next. He paused and he said, wait a minute. And he started following after the man of God. And he looked at the man of God. He said, and I'm paraphrasing. But he looked at the man of God and he said, What just happened to me? Something's changed. Yeah. Something's shifted. Yeah. Wow. I feel that for somebody. Yeah. I said something's changed. Something's shifted. It, it don't feel like what it used to feel like. Uh -huh. Something's changed. Something's shifted. One moment they didn't know if you were going to be here, but the next moment now you're here. And I watched him raise his hands. And give God a love telling you who but God can do such things as these. Hallelujah. And he said, he looked at me and said, well, what have I to do with thee? Elijah was like, what do you mean? What did I do? Now, here's the thing. 
I'm just going to throw this out here for, for you to chew on. Nowhere in Scripture, and if you find it, you can let me know. But I, I tried. Nowhere in Scripture do you find that Elijah and Elisha met before then. That's right. Uh, Amen, yeah. brother. Come on. Preach. How did he know that that was the right one? How did he know how to get there and where to go? I believe the hand of the Lord led him there. And as he was just walking by, a man listening to the Lord, maybe it caught kind of like this way. Amen. There's no scripture for it, but there's no scripture against it. Oh, Sister Whitline. Sister Bobby. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Maybe as he was walking by saying, okay, God, you got to let me know where he is. All of a sudden, something quickened in his spirit and said, there he is. There he is. Hallelujah. There he is. I'm here to tell you tonight that the Holy Ghost has come by and God said, there he is. There she is. I mean, they've been waiting. Here Elisha thought he was going to have an ordinary day, Sister Carol. Here Elisha thought that he was going to be contented by plowing the field of his father for the rest of his life. But God had other plans in store. Aren't you glad for it tonight? Amen. And he looked and he said, wait a minute. Let me go back and tell my mom and dad goodbye. And then I'll go with you. But this, this is where God brought me to today. I was praying today. I said, God, I need a word for Judah tonight. And this afternoon, the Lord just dropped this in my spirit. The Bible says, here's what he did. He went back to his mom and dad. Slayed mm him. Took those 12 yoke of oxen and slayed them. But what did he make the kindling with? The Bible said... That he used the instruments of the oxen right. or the plow. He broke the plow into pieces so that he could use it as kindling. Well, what does that have to do with anything? We're going to get there in just a minute. Uh huh. So the Bible said he broke the plow. I've come to tell somebody you've got to make it to where you don't have any option to go back. You got to make it to where you're not even tempted to go back. You got to make it to the point where you say, I've done come too far. I'm now, this is what the Lord spoke to me. I said, God, and the Lord dropped in my spirit. He said, my people are at a point of no return. He said, get rid of anything that would ever tempt you to go back into that state, back into that place. Amen. That moment before, hallelujah, the mantle was casted on your life. I can't go back even if I wanted to. I don't even have the option to go backward. I don't even have the option to throw in the towel. I don't even have the option to quit because I destroyed what I was comfortable with. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Don't tell me that it cannot get hard and he didn't think to himself. Well, I'll just go back to what I'm comfortable doing. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Guilty. Right. Been there. Yeah. Repented over it. Uh -huh. And the Bible said that at that moment that he left everything. Listen, he left his family. He left his mom, his dad. He left the family business. Brother Dennis, he left whatever, anything that he ever known or was comfortable with. And he started pursuing something that he didn't even know what it was. Sister Angie, he didn't even know what he was pursuing. All he knew was at that moment in time, something shifted in his life. And the Bible says that he went unto the prophet and he ministered unto him. The word minister means to attend to. Sister Debbie, he went and attended to him. He made sure... That the prophet was taken care of. That's right. But I, I, I want you to see what happened. When you go into the book of 2 Kings. Amen. Stay right there, Elisha. When you go into the book of 2 Kings. 2 Kings chapter 2. Yes, Lord. The Bible says in 2 Kings chapter 2. Verse number 1. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us that there they were at Gilgal. Hallelujah. And it came to pass when the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind that Elijah went with Elisha 
from Gilgal. Somebody say Gilgal. Gilgal. Notice we are told that something is about to happen to Elijah. Uh-huh. The Bible says that Elijah was getting ready to be caught in a whirlwind. It is important to note that they were in Gilgal. Somebody say Gilgal. Gilgal. The word Gilgal means rolling. It is a root word that means a wheel. It means to go into circles. It is at Gilgal where the Lord wanted to roll out the reproach of Egypt among the Israelites. So, so get where I'm going. He is in there. They're coming from this place of rolling. They're coming from this place of circling. Same old, same old. Same battles and same experiences. How many have ever felt like your wheels are turning but you're not going anywhere? Been there. How many says it's the same thing over and over and over and over? I'm up. They sing about it. I'm down. I'm good. I'm not so good. I've got joy. I've got this curse. We've all been there, done that. We've all been that place of Gilgal. And the Bible says in verse number two, hallelujah. And Elijah said unto Elisha, tarry here. Stay here. I pray thee, for the Lord has sent me to Bethel. And what did Elisha say unto him? As the Lord liveth and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they went down to Bethel. That's right. Amen. Mm -hmm. And when they got down to Bethel, verse number, the sons of the prophets, and I'm going to paraphrase, the sons of the prophets started teasing him, saying, don't you understand that God is getting ready to take your master from you? He's getting ready to go. Amen. And maybe they looked at it and said, we can't get a word edgewise in with the prophet because you're always there. Mm -hmm. Prophet pet. Uh-huh. <laughs> prophet pet. Mm -hmm. And what did Elisha say? I know it. Just be quiet. Hold your peace. Mm -hmm. Now they went from Bethel, or they went from Gilgal to Bethel. Bethel in the Hebrew tongue means the house of the Lord. So they went from a place of rolling, now they're in the house of the Lord. And when they get to Bethel, what did it, and the prophet do in verse 4? He said unto him, Terry here I pray thee, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. And he said, As the Lord liveth and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they came back and went to Jericho. Mm -hmm. Verse number 5. Again, the sons of the prophets told him, and he said, I know, hold your peace. So here's, here's the scenario. They go from Gilgal to Bethel. When they were in Gilgal, he said, stay here. He went, nope, I'm going to Bethel. Right. Now they get to Bethel and he looks at it and says, I'm going to Jericho. You stay here in Bethel. Right. And he was like, nope, if you're going to Jericho, I'm going to Jericho. <laughs> What's Jericho? Jericho is a place where the walls fell down. So do you see the pattern? They went from a place of rolling to the house of God. When they left the house of God, God take, put it, brought them into a place where all the walls fell. And when they got to Jericho, he looked at him and said, you stay here at Jericho. Now I'm going to Jordan. Do you see a pattern here? Every place that the prophet went, he looked at his amen successor, his predecessor, his apprentice, and he said, I'm leaving, but I'm telling you to stay. And every time that he did that, he looked and said, I don't think so. This is the way I see it. Maybe he looked at it and said, wait a minute, hold back, wait a minute. I don't have any other choice but to follow after you. I was comfortable where I was. I had a good job with my dad. I knew what I was doing. I did not ask you to come by and to change my life. I did not ask you to come by and to flip me upside down. I did not come by and ask you to lay your mantle upon me. I can't tell you fully what I'm pursuing. But I know this much. Something on the inside of me is telling me it's not over yet. Something on the inside of me is telling me that I've got to keep on pursuing. I've got to keep on following. I've come to tell somebody tonight. And just like we preached a 
your last time. You gotta keep on pursuing. You gotta keep on moving. You may not know what you're pursuing. You may not understand where God's taking you. You may not have the full revelation of it all. Can I be honest with you? I don't know what all God's doing in me and where he's taking me to either. But I know this much. I've got to keep on moving and pursuing. Because I've already gotten to the point of no return. I've already destroyed the plow. I've already destroyed any inkling or any temptation for me to go back to my place of comfort. I'm closer now to my breakthrough than I've ever I'm closer now to my family being healed than I've ever been before. I'm closer now for the Lord to do what he said he's going to do than ever before. i got to keep on going. Uh-huh. Yeah. Then we'll say just stop. Nope. No, keep on rolling. Well, where are you going? I don't know. How you going to get there? No clue. But I know this much. God's going to make sure he don't give me that. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They went to Jordan. The Lord, we preached on Jordan the last time. It means, this, amen, a place of descending. It's a place of baptizing. It's a place of submerging. Do you see the pattern? He'll take you out of your, amen, running around. He'll take you out of your circles. He'll put you in his house. When you get in his house, he'll cause the walls to fall down. And when the walls fall down, he'll submerge you in his love. He'll submerge you in his anointing. He'll submerge you in his peace. Yeah. I'm looking for somebody that says, submerge me tonight, God. Submerge yeah. me tonight, Lord. Yeah. And the Bible said that the two went on. Now here's what happened. As the two went on, the Bible said that the prophet, I'm going to paraphrase, but the Bible says that the prophet Elijah looked at Elijah and said, what do you want from me? What are you asking from me? Uh huh. What do you want? The Bible says that the 50 men of the sons of the prophets went and stood in view of all, and they too stood by Jordan. Verse number 8. And Elijah took his mantle and wrapped it together and smoked the waters. Yes. And they were divided hither and thither, so they went to, went over on the dry ground. And as they're going over on that dry ground, he looks at it and says, what is it you want? He said, here's what I want. He said, I don't want your position. I don't want your title. I don't want to be the next prophet. What I want is the presence that is on your life. I'm not, I said this the other night in revival. I'm not chasing after a move of God. I'm chasing after the God of the Lord. I'm not chasing after the healing. I'm chasing after the healer. I'm not chasing after peace. I'm chasing after the peace seeker. I'm not chasing after the breakthrough. I'm chasing after the breakthrough giver. I'm not chasing after life. I'm chasing after the life giver. When my perspective changes and I chase him more than I chase what he can do, then it will help me to keep on moving when I don't feel, hallelujah, when I don't feel like it. Because I'm not trying to chase after what he can do. I'm trying to chase after who he is. Because it's him that sustains me. It's him that gives me peace. It's him that will heal my body. What are you pursuing tonight? There's a lot of people that's pursuing title. They can have it. There's a lot of people that pursue pets on the back. They can have them too. There's a lot of people that pursue things of this world. But the Bible says not to lay up our treasures in this world, but to put them in heaven where no moth and that can cause them to be corrupted. They won't rust. They will not wither. Hallelujah. I'm not pursuing after what I can gain on this earth. I'm pursuing after God. Amen. When I pursue after God, He'll cause me to rise when I need to rise. And He'll cause me to lay down when I need to lay down. When I pursue God, He'll make a way where there seems to be no way. When I pursue God, I don't even have to jimmy the lock. But He'll open doors that no man can open. And He'll shut doors that no man can shut. What are we pursuing, Jesus? We're not 
pursuing, amen, a new building just because we want a new one on South High Street. Come on. We're pursuing God. And because we pursue God, we're going to have to make room. When I realize who I'm pursuing, it causes me to press on a little bit harder. Because what I get here is temporary. But what he has to offer is eternal. He said, here's what I want. Let a double portion of your spirit be upon me. Out of everything that he asked for, Brother Billy, he said, let there be a double portion of your spirit. Now, double portion in the Hebrew doesn't mean two. He's not looking there, Brother Matt, saying, I want two of what you got. We think a double were like two. You know? You didn't have dinner, I'm sorry. Double quarter pounder with cheese. <laughs> Amen. That means there's two. Delicious. Amen. Of those patties on there. <laughs> Amen. It's like the Wendy's menu. You got single and double. And then now you got triple. Oh, yeah. yeah. Hallelujah. Don't go there. <laughs> He's not asking for double or triple. But when he asks for double, this is what he's asking for. For it to never be ending. Amen. For it to never die. He's saying eventually, you're going to be caught up out of here. You're leaving. But what you have, I want it to set. I'm looking for somebody that says, I want your presence to never Die in my life. And he looked at it and he said, You have asked a difficult thing. You have asked a hard thing. Hallelujah. But how many knows that if you keep on pursuing, you're going to get what you've asked for? He said, I want a double portion. That means, amen, spirit blowing. Amen. Speech. He said, I want a double portion of your spirit. I want a double portion of that breath of God that is in your life. We're, amen. He wasn't asking for just more of an anointing, but he was asking of more of God's spirit. Yeah. Amen. It, it was his purpose. Amen. If he was to carry the work of the prophet after the prophet was gone, he would need the presence of God in his life. He said, you've asked a hard thing. The word hard in Hebrew here means a severe. He said, you've asked a severe thing. How many have asked God for a hard thing lately? Yeah. I have. Come on. He said, but nevertheless, if you see me go when I'm taken, it shall be unto thee, but if not, it shall not be. Basically, here's what he said. If you stick with me, if you don't get tempted to go back to where it's comfortable. If you don't get tempted to go back to what you're used to. Then you can have what you've asked for. I believe that's where we are right now here at Judah Tabernacle. We're at a point of return to where we have done broke up the plow. Because we can't go back to where we used to be. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And God said, if you'll stick with me and you'll follow after me, then you're about to get what you've asked me for. If you stick with me, I'll give you the miracles that you're looking for. If you stick with me, I'll bring in the harvest that you're looking for. I'm just going to be real with you. If you'll stick with me, I will bring in that $5.5 million that's needed to the, that's a severe thing. That's a hard thing. I was amen, telling somebody the other day, they said, I see that you're building. I said, yep. I said, we're building our churches. Well, how much is it going to cost you? I said, $5.5 million. They went, oh. <laughs> And they said, that's a hard thing. I said, yep. But God promised it. And if God said it, we're standing on it. And we're believing it. And not only is God going to provide that, but he's going to pay this building off. He's going to renovate it. This is going to be the new campus of care connection that will serve this local amen establishment. Can somebody give the Lord praise for it tonight? I'm believing we are pursuing after God, and God's getting ready to make it happen. Mm -hmm. 
Here's what happened. Let me, let me get to the chase. The Bible said that it came to pass that they still went on, that they talked, and behold, there appeared the chariots of fire and the horses of fire. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It came down in between them. Yeah. Something happened. One man left, but something stayed. Yeah. The, the Bible said that Elijah went up by uh, heaven in a whirlwind, verse number 12. And Elisha saw it, and he cried, My father, my father, the chariots of Israel, and the horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more, and he took his own clothes, and he ripped them into pieces. We're going to get there in just a moment. And he took up also the mantle of Elijah that fell from him, and went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. Here's Jordan again. Uh-huh. And stood back at, and he took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and he smote the waters and he said, where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he also had smitten the waters, they parted hither and thither and Elisha went over. Let's pause right there. The Bible said that Elijah left, but something fell. Can I tell you that the presence of God is still available? That the mantle of God is still available? Elijah left, but the mantle fell. But the Bible said that before Elisha would pick up the mantle of Elijah, he ripped in his clothes. Which means I can't stay the same way that I used to be. Something's got to change. And we said he picked up also the mantle of Elijah. That's where we are right now. Judah, I believe that's where we are right now. The mantle that God has prepared for us in this local assembly and individuals has fell down from heaven. And now we are at the place where God said, I'm ready for somebody to pick it up. I'm ready for somebody that's been pursuing. Somebody that didn't even get to the listen. At this point, now he wasn't even able to go back to where he was. And he picked up, and what did he do? The Bible doesn't say that he picked up the mail, put it on, and said, look. Nope. <laughs> now I'm anointed. He began to use what God gave him. That's right. Amen, brother. If we're going to pick it up, then we need to use it. Yep. Amen. Yeah. And the Bible said that he smote the waters. Now here's where I'm going. After he smote the waters, that when the sons of the prophets which were to view at Jericho saw him, they said, what? The spirit of Elijah does rest on Elijah. That's exactly what he asked for. I saw the glory of the Lord. That's exactly what they asked for. And the Bible said the same ones who taunted him, Sister Mary Jo, now came and bowed themselves to the ground before him. Why? Because they seen the same spirit that was on Elijah is now on Elisha. Can I tell you that when we pick up the mantle, this community's going to know it. When we pick up the mantle, people are going to know that we have got what the Lord said we can have. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Praise God. Let me tell you that when he picked up the mantle, he was ready to go. The mantle, amen. This outward covering. Can I tell you that there are mantles available for us? That there's the mantle of Abraham to have faith to pursue something that you've never seen or touched. The mantle of Joshua to tear down walls and to take over cities. The mantle of David to restore the power of worship and praise back to the body. The mantle of Nehemiah, pastor preached on that Sunday, to have the burden to reveal what's been destroyed. The mantle of Isaiah to see heavenly visions. The mantle of Daniel to pray even if it costs your life. The mantle of Jeremiah to have the word of God like fire shut up in your bones. The mantle of Ezekiel to speak life to dead things. The mantle of Peter to preach with boldness. And the mantle of Paul to preach despite circumstances. We have got to get ready to pick up the mantle. Amen. Let's look at 2 Kings 13, 20 and 21. 
Amen. In closing. And Elisha died. And they buried him. And the bands of the Moabites invaded the land at the coming end of the year. Verse 21. Hallelujah. And it came to pass as they were burying a man that behold, they spied a band of men and they cast the man into the sepulcher of Elisha. And when the man was let down and touched the bones of Elisha, he revived and stood up on his feet. Now, why did you read that? What did Elisha ask for? He said, I want the presence of God, but I don't want it to ever die. I don't want ever it to ever be gone. Even when Elisha was in the grave, his bones still possess that presence of the Lord that was on his life. That when a dead man came in contact with the dead carcass of a prophet, there was still life in the bones of the prophet of God and the man was raised from the dead. Wow. Woo. God knows exactly what he's doing. Yeah. So I said all that to say this. We are now due to tabernacle at a point of no return. We've already busted up the plow. If you haven't, get it out of your shed and bust it up tonight before you go home. Good preaching. Thank you. Hallelujah. Bust it up. Why? Don't ever get tempted to go back to where you come from. Mm -hmm. But because you're here and you're still pursuing, God's got a purpose. Amen. And I believe there are some people in this house on a Thursday night that says, Preacher, I'm pursuing a presence. I'm pursuing a presence. And you've been pursuing. And you've been obedient. And now you're at a crossroad. It's all right. The Lord's got me. Hallelujah. There's a mantle laying in front of you. <coughs> Either you pick it up and move on, or you listen, what would happen if Elisha looked at it and said, eh, I don't know if I really, I don't think that's for me. Who would then destroy King Ahab and Queen Jezebel? Mm -hmm. He was part of that equation to see that kingdom be brought down. If we don't pick up the mantle, who's going to minister deliverance to the south end of Columbus? If we don't pick up the mantle, who's going to minister the word to the addict? Who's going to minister the word to the alcoholic? Who's going to minister the word to the homeless? Who's going to minister the word to the lost? If we don't pick up the mantle, who's going to listen? Can I tell you? Amen. That God has purposed us to be where we are. We've said it before. We'll say it again. God has purposed us to be here. Amen. God moved us from a storefront from Groveport, Sister Bobby. Amen. He moved us into a little church in Reese. From that little church in Reese, we were down the street here. I still remember, when, and I said it the last time, when Pastor said, we're leaving Delray and we're going to High Street. And I were getting to DFW, and I said, you have lost your mind. <laughs> oh, yeah. What do you mean? Yeah. Because God purposely put us here. Yeah. That's right. Amen. Amen it was so funny when we first moved in this building. I mean, it, we didn't even have the sign changed yet. It was our first service. I'll never forget, we have 80 blade plug-ins all around here. Because yeah. it smelled like a DFW. <laughs> Yeah, we painted the walls, and I remember we didn't change the sign, and we pulled up that first service, Sister Joanne, and I remember there were cars out there, and I thought, ooh, we got some new people at church this morning. And I got out of my car, and one of the elderly gentlemen looked at me and said, what time does it open? I said, 11 o'clock. You got anything to drink when I get in there? I said, you better believe it. Living water. He's got a wine that you've not tasted of before. He goes, well, I'll be in there at 11 o'clock. And boy, when he walked in and realized that it was a church, he didn't know what to do. Hallelujah. <laughs> but God knew what he was doing. Amen. Praise the Lord. Dark, dark walls, black ceiling. Amen. Worn out carpet. Dance floor. It's not. It's funny. God changed that dance floor. There was a dance floor right here. God changed it to a Holy Ghost dance floor. 
in the first few years before we changed the carpet. Hallelujah. We danced all over that floor. Then we got new carpet and I put a stain on it with oil. <laughs> Very first service we had it. Amen. Praise the Lord. But God purposed us to be here. Why? Because we have a mantle to pick up. But can I tell you, it's not just pastor's job to pick it up. It's not just sister pastor's job to pick it up. Sister Luann. It's not just the leadership's job. It's not just the praise team's job. But each and every one of us that's here strategically has a mantle. That's available. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm asking to come to the music tonight. Amen. Thank you, Brother Shane. We appreciate Brother Shane tonight. He made a great life. Thank you. He made a great life tonight. Amen. But we're at a point of no return. Look at somebody say, you're at a point of no return. You're at a point of no return. And here's what I feel under the Lord tonight to tell you. That there's some mantles that are available for some people tonight. As much as I love you, I can't pick it up for you. I've got to pick it up for myself. You've got to pick it up for yourself. As you stand with your feet all over this house tonight, we're going to get you home in just a minute. First and foremost, First and foremost, I'm asking you tonight, how's your heart with the Lord? Maybe there might be somebody watching. Maybe there's somebody in here. I assume everybody's right with the Lord. And maybe there's somebody in here that just needs to recommit. I don't know. I just want to give you the opportunity. I recommit every day to the Lord. Every day. So this altar is open for you if you feel like you need to pray. If you're watching tonight and you feel like you need to pray, this altar is open for you. Praise the Lord. But I'm just going to be obedient to the Lord tonight. in the name 
name of Jesus. God, I pray, Lord, as he gets into this word, God, that you would give him wisdom and understanding. God, as his family begins to declare this word over his life and speak this word over his life, let that word become living. Let that word become a man. Substance for him, I pray in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Because he's a walking, talking miracle. I said he's a walking, talking miracle. Every morning when you get up, you just ask God to cover you with his blood. Say, God, today cover me in your blood. Wash me in white as snow. Keep getting in that word. You got questions about it. You got a family that can help you. You got folks here at church that'll stand with you. Amen. And we're going to watch God strengthen you and do a work in your life. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Somebody thank the Lord for our brother. Amen. But there's an angle that are available tonight. Hallelujah. 